I'm going to be talking about the rock cycle up next on Geek Out Science. Hey there. All right. So today we're going to be talking about the rock cycle and I'm going to show you a little demo of how we go through and make a pretend rock cycle at home. All right. But before we can talk about the rock cycle, we need to go backwards a little bit and we need to talk about minerals. Now, remember, minerals are the naturally occurring substances that come together to create rocks. Minerals are not rocks. We identify minerals through luster, through streak, sometimes through color and through hardness. Hardness is going to be the important one that we need to know for the rock cycle. Because remember with hardness, sometimes you could scratch a rock with your fingernail and pieces of it would come off. Or sometimes you could scratch a rock with a penny or with another rock and it would come off. Now remember with diamond, diamond is the hardest on the hardness scale. So nothing can scratch diamond, but diamond can scratch everything else before it, okay? Hardness just tells us how easily these minerals can be scratched and they can be broken down. So then that's going to lead us to the next thing, which is weathering and erosion. And we learned that way, way, way back in elementary school. Weathering is when something is broken down by chemical means or by physical means. So that could be acid in acid rain or in lichens and mosses. It could be from a tree growing up in between the rocks. It could be from rocks falling on other rocks. It could be human impact, animal impact. All different kinds of things, remember, can cause weathering. Weathering is the breaking down of the rock. Then you have erosion, which is taking the rock to another place, okay? So in the first part of our demo, we're going to talk about weathering and erosion, and then we're gonna talk about how that creates sediment and sedimentary rock. So we're going to pretend that these different pieces of crayon are different kinds of rocks. And the grater is some type of weathering component. So it's going to weather, 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 weather. Oh, goodness, a tree grew up in between me and pieces of me fell off. Oh, weather, 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 weather. Oh, my goodness, I'm the Hawaiian Islands and there's so many waves. And it's just crashing on me and breaking little pieces off. I'm in the desert and there's wind everywhere. Oh, my goodness, I'm weathering, I'm weathering. Be careful not to grate your fingers when you do this, okay? You may need some adult supervision when you're grating. Be very careful. So I now to... I have all this rock. Well, rock is not crayon. Rock is heavy, right? So over time, the rock is on top of each other, and it lays on top of each other, and it presses down with lots of rock pressure, okay? And more rock, and more rock, and more rock, and we call this compaction and cementation, okay? So it's getting pushed together with all of this pressure of all this rock on top of it, okay? And pressed together, and it's compacted, it's scrunched down, okay? And then it's cemented together, meaning it sticks together. When that happens, we have a sedimentary rock, okay? So all the sediments, all the little pieces that were weathered, they come together, they get compacted and cemented together and they make a sedimentary rock. Okay, so can you remember that? Sedimentary rock. Compaction, cementation, sedimentary rock. So this is our sedimentary rock, okay? And you'll see it, it looks like stripes. You can see it if you look where we've cut out to make our roads and things and you see those stripes in the rocks. Those are sedimentary rocks, okay? They get those stripes in there from all the layers being pressed down, all right? So that is sedimentary rock. All right, so the next step after sedimentary rock comes metamorphic rock. So we've got all this compaction and all this cementation and all this pressure, right? Well, as things pressurize, you also begin to add in heat, okay? They're putting that pressure on there and there's more and more heat. I'm gonna use the iron to represent the heat and I'm gonna press on it. Now just do this kind of lightly because it's very hot. You can alter the temperature on your iron, okay? But I just wanna, so this is going to put these sedimentary pieces together even more firmly. All right. So when we do, do you see the stripes? We call those striations, okay? So that is from the rock pieces coming together with this heat and pressure. So you should be able to see 
these stripes of the rock. So now you're gonna see even more striping than you did on the sedimentary rock. And I didn't press down too hard there with the iron because I was afraid of really, really smashing it up, okay? But now you will see with heat and pressure, it metamorphosizes, right? Metamorphic rock, it turns into a different type of rock. In sedimentary, I could really kind of see the pieces of rock still together. In metamorphic, it's gonna turn into a new looking rock. I can still see some of the different minerals and rock pieces that are in here, but it looks very different than my sedimentary rock, okay? So that's gonna be metamorphic. All right, so we've had sedimentary, we've had metamorphic, and now the last type of rock that we're gonna look at in the cycle is igneous rock. I'm going to try this with candles. Normally when I'm at school, I'll use a hot plate, but candles should work as effectively. Okay, the candles are the magma in the earth, right? We remember about magma and we remember about those subduction zones where the plate is pushed underneath, right? Okay, so when the plate is pushed underneath, the plate is made out of this metamorphic rock or sometimes out of sedimentary rock. And so it's pushed down into the magma and this may take a little bit. Don't burn yourself trying to do this. Make sure that your candle has oxygen so that it can stay. So you should see it start to melt together. And I can see it melting up here. And I'm just, now we're just gonna have to wait and sit here and watch me melt this. <laughs> so this is wax paper and aluminum foil, okay? So make sure and aluminum, remember, is a good conductor. We learned about that during elements, and you'll start to see some heat coming off of this. I can see some steam, and it's gonna start to melt together. What we should see is it's gonna melt all of this together, and we're gonna get like a black color. I'm trying to turn it a little so that y'all can see it, because it's starting to melt. Can you see it melting? So over time, this is going to melt. Okay, those convection currents send that hot magma up to the top. It cools, it sinks down. So this rock is gonna keep melting and cooling and sinking down. And mostly I'm just darkening my foil. It works better with a hot plate, but this works. You just have to get it to kind of come together. Come together. can see it it's liquidy right do you see the liquid can you see the liquid running I'm looking over at my producer to see if he can see the liquid running can you see the liquid running okay so it's very runny eventually over time this will all run together and it will mix all the minerals together okay because they're super super heated in that magma heat and it's gonna mix all the minerals together so you will no longer see the individual colors you will just see like a black color where all of these have mixed together and become just one dark color, okay? I'm not gonna make y'all sit here and watch me do this forever and ever and ever. But take my word for it, it mixes together. Here, I'll mix it with this crayon. We'll do speed photography. <laughs> so when you mix it, do you see how I just get this brown, brown color? Can you see that on the end of my crayon? Okay, and then it's gonna harden in the air and this is gonna become an igneous rock. So before I had all these pretty colors inside of my sedimentary rock and my metamorphic rock, and now I just have this dark brown rock, okay? Because everything has melted together and I've melted all of the different rocks and I've combined them all together with that heat of the magma and now I just have this rock, okay? Does that make sense? So we've gone through sedimentary, weathering, compaction and cementation. We've gone through metamorphic, we've heat and pressurized it, and then we've gone down into the earth and created igneous. Now this is called a rock cycle because these can happen any way. The magma can shoot up, like on the Hawaiian Islands, that's igneous rock. It melts and it turns into this rock in the air, but then it can get weathered and it can turn straight into sedimentary, okay? The metamorphic rock can get turned into sedimentary. The metamorphic rock can go down into the earth and become igneous. The sedimentary rock can go down into the earth and become igneous, okay? So this is all a big cycle that goes around and around and around and around and around and around, making rock and making rock and making the earth what it is, all right? 
Well, I hope everybody understood all of those things. That's the rock cycle. That's what we're going to be learning about right now. And we're going to do some projects about the rock cycle. Okay. So enjoy the rock cycle. If you'd like to do this at home, this is all things that you can use from home. Crayons, a grater, wax paper, candles, an iron, and some aluminum foil. All right. I hope you enjoyed Geek Out Science today. I'll see you next time.